Hey folks, hope you're all doing well and welcome back to the channel. So it's that time again. We're doing another ranking show. This time we're doing it on the Gillen Band, not the Ian Gillen Band. The Gillen Band, the one after the Ian Gillen Band, the one before Ian Gillen went and sang with uh, Black Sabbath. So it's in that little area there. So uh, to help me in that endeavor, uh, I've got Mr. Pete Pardo and Mr. Martin Popoff. How are you gentlemen doing this evening? Doing okay. Well. Looking forward to this one. Definitely. Yeah. So um, I'm going to be uh, this. This band is new for me. So I'm letting everybody know. Brand new. We I was uh, three months ago or four months ago, whenever we decided we were going to do this. I'm like, all right, let me check these guys out. And uh, <laughs> I'm glad I did. Discovered an amazing guitar player and some really good records that I was not aware of. So I want to thank these guys for suggesting this band. So, uh, yeah. So there's they only have the six releases. So uh, let's go around the table. I'm going to ask a question. Pete, when did you first hear the Gillen Band? So as we were talking before we started uh, recording today, uh, I have been aware of this band for eons because, of course, I'm an enormous Deep Purple fan. But, you know, back in the late 70s, the early 80s, pretty much, uh, Gillen never played here. You barely ever saw these albums in the stores. They were all available on imports and they made like no impact here in the States whatsoever. So yeah. they were just kind of like out of sight, out of mind. And I always knew we had this band, but I was listening to everything else, White Snake and Rainbow and everything else around it. You know, Martin and I are going to talk a little bit about that stuff tomorrow on uh, the Fun House. But for whatever reason, this band just didn't really cross my radar because of availability of product, basically. So it wasn't mm -hmm. until really the 90s where I started picking up these uh, albums on import CDs where I was just like, holy cow, it's like, where has this band been all my life? Because the guy's my favorite singer of all time, right? You would think that uh, this would appeal to a teenage Pete Pardo, and absolutely, these guys would have been one of my favorite bands at the time. So it's one of those instances of better late than never, but as I was telling Hack before we went live, it's like I I think it's so cool to be able to discover a band like this at this stage in our lives and fall in love yeah. with it, even though it's so many years later. But it's still really cool to to find a fresh old band that yeah. is new to you, right? So yeah. Yeah, I was uh, I was telling Pete actually when when you know when I was going through these records, I was sitting there listening to these guys having a cigar and just getting absolutely blown away and i messaged pete this stuff's amazing <laughs> you know again it's so cool to discover you know new old music if you will right yeah, yeah. what about yourself martin well i discovered this band uh kind of the coolest way you can discover these things other than seeing them live um it was the sleeping on the job 45 which i probably was well i don't know i, I don't know it might have been after Mr. Universe was out for some reason. I just remember that as the first thing. It came with a little Gillen patch. It had a song on the, um, it had a higher and higher on it as well. Little picture sleeve 45. And then, yeah, into the albums as new releases. I, I somehow don't think I had the Japanese album first or Mr. Universe. I think I got a Canadian Glory Road first. So it would have been like 1980. I remember getting as a new release, the, you know the the import of future shock i'm going to show all this stuff here pete's seen this stuff before but uh there's my fully signed uh gillen picture oh, cool. um which i got from bill Barron. sadly our our buddy who's uh who's uh, had a had a bad stroke and he's in a long-term care home but this i traded this off of him at one point but that's really cool because they actually did come to toronto and they played here and and oh, bill yeah? saw them bill and, and my buddy steve i think probably was with them um, so yeah, they, they, you know, a, a rare occasion they came here when they were, but yeah, I've, uh, I've been known to call this band, my favorite band of all time. Uh, you know, oh, wow. when, when, when I'm thinking of these short catalogs that are, that are all just really good. You know, I've, I've said that about Max Webster, uh, mm. uh, as well, but, uh, Ian doesn't want me to write a book on them though. Ian, Ian's like, uh, nah, those bad times. I don't really want to talk about that. Cause you know, I think he has bad memories about this whole thing. And, uh, as as we've talked about, Bernie Torme is um, is no longer with us. I think uh, Mick Underwood is. I, I believe he has dementia. 
Um, Colin Towns has always refused to ever talk about this band. I have interviewed Mick and I've interviewed uh, John McCoy. John McCoy is kind of the last man standing of the main lineup. You know, Yannick Garris isn't going to talk about the band too much, but it would be cool to interview him about it. But uh, but the problem with John is John keeps putting out all this Gillen stuff on kind of dodgy Angel Air, Cleopatra type releases. And I think that's uh, a bee in uh, Ian's bonnet as well. Um, so yeah, a lot of drama around this band. A lot of they, wow. they fought a lot they didn't have a lot of money it was just a crazy crazy band but i i think this catalog's just really cool but uh there you go yeah that might be why he jumped on the black sabbath train <laughs> it didn't bother well totally yeah anything. partly yes uh yeah they they were yeah there there was just a lot of spending a lot of money not money coming in financial wow. irregularities management problems running that studio at the same time uh you know the, the band thinking they're broke they don't have enough money ian's going to them saying we don't have any money uh so uh yeah a lot, lot of lot of stuff there but if if i ever did a gillen book it would be a love letter to the band it would be about the songs essentially i i just dissect the catalog more than anything but i have done some writing on them i've done some short documents on some of this stuff but. and martin what do you think because you know there there's all sorts of uh stuff that's been documented about how the mark ii deep purple reunion they tried to get that to happen earlier than it actually happened we might not have even gotten those last two gillen albums if mm -hmm. that uh, deep purple reunion had happened a little sooner yeah yeah, that's true. Yeah, they that that had been simmering for quite a while, right? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. All right. Well, the, there's only six records in the whole catalog, so we'll just go around one at a time, and yeah, we'll just do it that way. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, Pete, if you want to start with your uh, number six. All right. Uh, for my number six, so you know, I I ranked the whole ian gillen catalog a number of years ago on sea of tranquility i included the ian gillen band stuff and the gillen and his solo albums and everything and i went and kind of rewatched that and you know my i think my uh, opinion on some of these albums not necessarily these here but uh, on the catalog has changed a bit over the years so i was kind of puzzled by the way i ranked them back then so i tried to do this with a whole fresh set of ears and i went and re-listened to all these again i'm gonna go with uh Gillen or the Japanese album, as it's called, at number six, which I really do like. Uh, I think all of these albums are really, really good. To me, this particular album, I think, still has some remnants in style and sound from the Ian Gillen band, which was more kind of fusion proggy and less kind of like heavy and hard rock like most of these albums are. But I think there's some really good stuff on here. Uh, you know, Secrets of the Dance is a great song, no matter how you look at it. It's fast and furious. You love that. I think Steve Bird's guitar work is, is pretty pretty good on most of this album. You know, he's very different from uh, Bernie Torme, as we'll talk about. Um, I'm Your Man, kind of generic hard rocker. Dead of Night is a killer song, no matter how you how you look at it. I do like the re-recorded version uh, better on the next album, I think. Um, Fighting Man's kind of proggy, kind of sounds like Ian Gillen band stuff. I think, like I said, I think a lot of this album sounds like a carryover from that band. A lot of great keyboards on this album. Uh, not Weird Enough, kind of boogie, kind of proggy. That's okay. Bringing Johanna back. Again, more kind of fusion proggy, whatever. Abbey of Thalema, kind of the same thing. And uh, back of the game, though, is a pretty decent hard rocker. Overall, I like it. I think it's a must-have if you're kind of checking this catalog out. And what's what's really interesting to me is hearing the versions of songs on this album with this lineup and then hearing yeah. them a year later with a new lineup featuring a different guitar player and Bernie Torme and how that kind of changes things up a little bit. But, yeah, it's my number six, but I like it a lot. I mean, I would I would easily recommend this to anybody. All right. All right. What do you got for uh, number six, Martin? Well, I'm also going to go with the Japanese album. There's your Japanese vinyl version of it. And there's, uh, I believe that's uh, Colin and Ian on the back. Ian with his, you know, beard and mustache there. Mm -hmm. That kind of cool look that he had is what the gatefold looks like of that. Very cool. 
Uh, actually reminds me a little bit of Rainbow Rising a little bit. Uh, anyways, <laughs> 1978, pretty heavy album for 1978, right? Um, I really like this album a lot. Um, I think this version of Secrets of the Dance, uh, Secret, Secrets of the Dance, um, Secret of the Dance is almost be almost better than than the next version. But this version of Dead of Night is is not as good. It's it's a little more lumbering. But uh, yeah, love love the drumming on here. Uh, Liam Janaki, he's got these kind of big. Um, you know, tumbling uh, bass drum, Tom, Tom fills like he plays kind of fusiony as, as Pete mentioned. And um, yeah, this has a few of the songs that are a little bit, it's got a few mellow ones like Abby of Thelema, which picks up later. And, and um, yeah, bringing Joanna back is, is the one that definitely sounds like an Ian Gillen band song. Um, but yeah, I, I like this lineup. I like uh, the, the Liam with, you know, being kind of a fusion kind of a fusion slash heavy metal guy, but he has that splash symbol that he throws in a lot. Right. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's good. Um, the recording is a little more conservative and actually kind of more yeah. capable. It's, it doesn't have the same eccentricity as the, uh, the proper Gillen recording, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of action on this, a lot of great songs. Um, message in a bottle is amazing as well. And we're going to hear mm -hmm. that later. Fighting man's kind of mellow. So yeah. Uh, it's still a really, really good album. You know, it'd be like a 7.5 or an 8, 8 to me. Uh, there's there's actually a, a CD version signed by Bernie and uh, and Ian. But again, this is uh, really, a, you know, a very deluxe reissue of it. But it is on Purple Pyramid, which is Cleopatra. So I, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is like John McCoy just giving this stuff to Brian and saying, hey, go ahead run this stuff and and ian's probably very upset that even this the, these exist right there's so many of these out there so many of these you know angel air cleopatra type uh, versions of these albums so yeah there yeah. you go number, number six all right well my number six i want to be a little different than you guys my number six is double trouble wow um now there was double trouble there was a studio and there was a live i'm only going to talk about the studio uh, the opening track on this, I'll Rip Your Spine Out, is a uh, nice mid-tempo but heavy opener. The keyboard's on this by Colin Towns. And the Colin Towns, who played keyboard, I think, through all the records, is unfrickin' believable. I'm not a, usually a huge keyboard fan, but this guy is just, he's just something else. Um, Restless, great follow-up. The chorus is so hooky. It goes from heavy to poppy. I like the change-up of it. You know, Men of War is okay. The light verse and the heavy chorus is okay. I don't like the solo. There's a musical interlude in there that yeah, it doesn't really work for me. Uh, there's a great riff in the song Sunbeam, but then it kind of falls flat for me. The solo is okay on that. Nightmare is okay. Hadley Bop is okay. The rest is fine. I don't know. This this album for me, I, I just found it, compared to the other ones, it just kind of lacked a little bit of energy. It almost sounds a little bit phoned in um it just didn't have some of the creativity of some of the other records um so that's kind of you know sort of why it ended up falling at six by no means is it a bad record but you know you're comparing you know good to great so some had to be number six and that was my number six so there you all go right. <clears throat> all right all right number five number five i'm gonna go with their last album magic so mm. uh this is um Yannick Gers, his second album, of course, now with Iron Maiden for many, Iron many Maiden. years. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think uh, overall pretty heavy album in spots. I, I think it does sound kind of like a band on their last gasp, however, uh, in spots. But there's some really good stuff. I mean, What's the Matter is a killer opener. I really like that a lot. Um, I think uh, Yannick's got some cool riffs in that one. And Colin's keyboards are really, really nicely done. Um, sounds to me like like heavy deep purple kind of in spots. Uh, bluesy boost, bluesy. Trying to say that fast three times, man. It's crazy. Uh, heavy bluesy romp. Dig that one quite a bit. Caught in the yeah. trap. I think is is one of the good anthems on this. I think it's got a really good chorus. I like it quite a bit. Uh, Long gone. And eh, that doesn't do a lot for me. It's kind of generic. Uh, Driving me wild. That's pretty heavy and kind of raucous. I love Demon Driver. I think that's nice and heavy, but it's maybe a couple minutes too long. Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. I think you trim about two, yes. three minutes from that, and you have Shop. a dynamite, dynamite track. 
Uh, living a lie, eh, that's okay. Uh, You're So Right, um, that's kind of got this commercial appeal. That's not a bad song. Nothing special. It's okay. And I think uh, Living for the City, their cover of the Stevie Wonder song, is really, really good. Um, yeah. That's a really good choice of a cover. Um, but overall, I think it's a there's some really good songs on here, a few that are kind of nothing special, but it's still a pretty solid record, I think, in their catalog. And But to me, it just sounds like a band that's probably on its last legs, but still pretty, pretty solid, though. All righty. What's your number five, Martin? I'm going to go with Glory Road. Um, this was pretty close with the uh, the Japanese album uh, for me uh, because, you know, it's uh, I love Sleeping on the Job. I love Unchain Your Brain, the heavy ones. I love No Easy Way, which is commercial. But, you know, Nervous is really slow, if you believe me. So it's got a blues on it time and again. Same kind of thing. It's got a bluesy mellow tune. Um, on the Rocks is one of their epics. But, um, yeah, I, I like it quite a bit. Um, but it's not not my favorite of the epics. So, yeah, I, I just feel um, there's there's enough material on this where I'm I'm feeling, you know, almost like two thirds of it or three fifths uh, is in the range of just not my favorite Gillen songs all in one place. But, you know, we're obviously into the the band firing on cylinders, the perfect lineup. Uh, mm -hmm. People people have always said um, I, I love when people comment that uh ian's best vocals of his whole career were almost uh, during this time and that always reminds me of the way i think like shock tactics is is possibly bruce dickinson's best album right so it's just this early rock and new wave of british heavy metal uh, era of the band but uh yeah just a little two peaks and valleys for me a little bit too much uh, on the mellow side and on on sometimes the the boring and, and slow side uh on this so yeah pretty pretty close with the debut that's my number five I think I would kind of agree with you, Martin. I think Mr. Universe to Born Again might be his best vocal period of all. Yeah. 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 That's... Definitely. And the rumor goes you blew out his voice on that tour. <laughs> yeah. Never sang again. Because hmm. he, he was like every night after night screaming. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Anyways. Um, yeah. So my number five is Future Shock uh title cuts great opener the riff is cool i like the verse and there's that killer guitar playing from bernie torme that's missing from double trouble that is a that is a huge plus uh for me uh bernie torme uh, discovered this guy and listening to these records and if you've never heard bernie torme and your guitar player do yourself a favor this guy's amazing um another killer riff for a night right out of phoenix love the pre-chorus and the chorus is cool. The lead break is cool. More whammy, please. Uh, <laughs> he's all about the whammy. Uh, the keys on the tag out are great again, man. Colin Towns, the, the keyboards on these records is just phenomenal. Um, not a big fan of the ballad of uh, the Lusitania Express. Um, next two are okay. No Laughing in Heaven and uh, Sacre Bleu, French. Uh, I do love the cover of New Orleans. I do like that because it's a nice departure. A bite the bullet is a good rocker. For me, the standout track here is If I Sing Softly. That is, I mean, I wrote here, it's haunting and beautiful. And I love it when it gets to that B section. It's just epic. Those changes are just absolutely awesome. Awesome. Um, don't Want the Truth is okay. Kind of lays a little flat for me for your dreams. Sounds like a little bit of filler. This is a very uneven record. There's a few great memorable songs, especially if I sing softly, but the rest is, you know, okay, is okay. So that's uh, my number five, Future Shock, which I think this, didn't this record kind of do the best out of all of them sales-wise? Am I right? Uh, it's, right? That's, pretty, that's pretty likely, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, was... I think that was their commercial peak, right? Okay, so... What do we got for number four, Pete? My number four is Future Shock, which um, to my ears might be the best production out of all of them. I don't know. I really like the way this album sounds. I think there's some great songs on here. I, I personally love the first three. I think Future Shock, the title track, Night Ride of the Phoenix, which is great, and Lusitania Express, I think, are all cool bangers and just get you right into the mood of the album. Um, no Laughing in Heaven, that's kind of this like tongue-in-cheek 
losing yeah. number. Um, you know, Ian's great on it. I'm not sure I love the track all that much, but I think Ian is just so charming and doing what Ian Gillen does so best on it. Uh, Sacre Bleu is fast and just crushes, but it's so short. Um, but it's still a good one. Uh, New Orleans, very well done. You know, it's not one of my favorites on here, but it is well done. I like Bite the Bullet. It's another fast-paced heavy hitter on here. Um, if I sing softly, I mean, that's the the softy on the album, right? It's got some nice melodies and things. It's not one of my favorites, but uh, Don't Want the Truth. That's kind of like a Deep Purple style hard rocker. And uh, I think For Your Dreams is, again, going back to that kind of like uh, fusion-y, proggy, style that they were doing that he was doing with the Ian Gillen band. Um, and I think it would have made a good song for that band as opposed to this band. But overall, I really like this album. I always love the cover artwork as well. And I think uh, the production is really good. So yeah, it's my number four. Good album. Really good album. Cool. Nice. All right. <clears throat> What's your number four, Martin? Well, Hack, you probably haven't seen this before. So yeah, so this is a Future Shock, the original UK version. And uh, when you open the gatefold, it's got a booklet with like these sci-fi pictures and then oh this, boy uh, look at that this band look so there's what's ian's looking like and then you've got uh uh more, more of this stuff the sci-fi stuff and some pictures and then you've got uh that's that's what bernie looks like he's kind of in his pirate pirate look uh, there, right? it's kind of cool yeah. eh? the bullet belt and that and then you've yeah. got john mccoy John McCoy is like a seat. Yeah. Mo more, <laughs> more collage. Yeah. There, there's the, there's the shot of them all just sitting at a table. there, looking really cool. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I, I agree. This is, this is probably the best produced one. Um, and future shock is way up there as, as one of my favorite songs by this band. But, but again, it's a little uneven, uh, a little uneven, like glory road. Um, I think I think you know I normally don't don't care and don't want to hear something like this New Orleans, but this band is such a, a freight train, right? Mm. Uh, driven by that distorted bass sound and and uh, you know calling and the way Mick mm. plays the drums. I mean, I I've always called this band the punk rock Deep Purple. That's kind of what they are, right? Um, you know, just just like a drinking partying version of Deep Purple, right? And just uh, you know, one take kind of a feel to it. But uh, but yeah, um, Night Rider Phoenix is is really cool, even though it's mid paced. No laughing in heaven is fun. It's got a great vocal performance, and Sacre Blue and and Lusitania are two awesome fast ones. Bite the bullets, another awesome fast one. Um, and yeah, the, and then the rest of the side does kind of kind of wilt a little bit, I, I suppose. Um, but yeah, Future Shock is just such a just a great smart put together you know mid mid paced but upper mid paced uh sort sort of cool song but uh yeah a little uh a little on the um a little on the uneven side but uh yeah fond memories of hooking out of school and all the buddies piling into a car instead of going to school i remember this trip because i i hit i hit a bunch of records in our shed and my and my folks realized <laughs> i didn't go to school and i had 10 records sitting in the shed and this was one of them <laughs> Yeah, look at it and melt in the heat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I do want to mention too for folks watching who maybe are new to this catalog, if you can, if they're if these are still available, the uh, Edsel CD reissues and remasters of these are terrific and have tons of bonus tracks. So, like on the Future Shock, you can see you get all sorts of extra stuff. You get Trouble, Your Sisters on My List, Mutually Assured Destruction, The Maelstrom. Take a hold of yourself, one for the road, Lucille and Bad News. So you get like eight additional bonus tracks. And like on Magic, there's also like an additional eight bonus tracks. So these are really good. And plus you get the cool like little spine things where it's a picture of Ian and you got to line them all up so you get the full full photograph of them. But yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that yeah, probably really. is like like official. Like Ian probably got involved and did that. I, I hope. I hope they are. I, I don't. I don't quite know the story, but I do know the story that why we have all these bonus tracks is because Ian was involved financially with the studio. So they mm -hmm. kind of had their own studio, right? Yeah. Ian, Ian, you, you get him talking, and he'll lament about the various business projects he got into that went belly up, sort of thing. And this was one thing I think that was was one of these money bleeding things. But that's why they have all these great bonus tracks because they could just go in the studio whenever yeah. they want. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, my number four is Magic. What's the matter is a great up-tempo opener. Bluesy Blue Sea. I like the slow epic groove of this. It, I get a bit of a White Snake vibe from this. The breakdown here is really cool. 
some decent guitar work from Yannick on this. I love Caught in a Trap. It's a very different, quirky, kind of new wave feeling, feel to it, which is a nice departure. Again, long gone, straight up, right out of the REO Speedwagon Foreigner songbook, but it's catchy and I dig it. Uh, not a fan of Driving Me Wild. Uh, it just sounds thrown together to me. There's like just a lot of different parts. It just sounds like a cobbled together song of different bits. Some bits are cool. Some bits not so cool. Demon Driver, man, seven minutes. It's just too long, too repetitive. <laughs> and yeah, that, that kind of, uh, yeah, that kind of torpedoes it there for me a little bit. Uh, Living a Lie, another from the Foreigner songbook type of song, but uh, I dig it. You're so right, cool, sh uh, short, up-tempo rocker. I love the remake of the Stevie Wonder, Living for the City. I mean, they do it in a grindy kind of rock way. It, it's amazing. It's really, really good. Uh, you know, what? what's really missing from this record is Bernie Tor Torme. That's what's missing. That would have made this, brought it up a notch for sure, man. You know, I mean, Yannick's playing is good, but it's really pedestrian in comparison to Bernie Torme. There was a, uh, a wildness and an unpredictable nature. Yeah. Of playing, I think that, you know, Ron, Yannick is fine on this stuff. He really is. But yeah. Bernie was just a really unique, different kind of go for the throat talent. And even yeah. like on his later stuff, like on all the solo albums and the, the band he had, was it GMT, right? Uh, yeah. That he yeah. did with uh, John McCoy later on. I mean, it, there's just something about his playing that was just totally, totally different. And oh, a really yeah. unique guy. I mean, I, I talked to him a couple of times and, uh, you know, it's really interesting. It's like, you know, especially when you started to to listen to his voc vocals and then you would actually talk to him. He had like a really bad, like, stutter. Yeah. And it's like when you talk to him, it's it's so apparent. But then when he sings, you don't hear it at all, obviously. So, uh, you know, he was able to overcome that and, uh, you know, really do some cool things with his voice later on. But, yeah, what a guitar player. Guitar player. Yeah, somebody mentioned like this was like a punk version of Purple. I think Martin, you might have mentioned that. He plays like a, you know, really aggressive, like a, just bangs the shit out of that strat, man. And like yeah. just heavy whammy, he's just like squeezing every sound he can get out of it. it. You know, but it's musical and it works. You know, it's, yeah. Uh, that strat always <laughs> sounds like it's ready to fall apart, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah, but the other, the, the, the track, the guitars and pieces, you know, but yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. So yeah. All right. We're down to number three. What do you got, Pete? All right. My number three, I'm going to go with uh double trouble, half live, half studio debut of Yannick Garris on guitar. Uh, I'll rip your spine out is terrific. Heavy. It's kind of majestic sounding too, though. I really like it a lot. Restless is a good hard rocker. I love metal war. Um, man, just Ian just screaming up a storm on that. I think, you know, his voice is just in peak, peak form by the time of this album. Uh, I love the riff on Sunbeam. Uh, Nightmare I like. I like the guitars. I like the keyboards on that quite a bit. Uh, Hadley Bop Bop. That's kind of weird boogie metal. I don't know, whatever. It's, it's kind of ridiculous, but it's kind of fun. Uh, Life Goes On is really heavy. I like that quite a bit. And I think uh, the 10 minute Born to Kill is a great kind of slow builder of a track um it's kind of it's almost like their love to love by ufo i really like it it's got this big furious kind of crescendo around the midway point that it ends all majestic i really like it a lot um and uh the live stuff is great on here too i mean there's a lot of really cool stuff on here i think mutually assured destruction is terrific on the live set so and you got new orleans on here you know trouble no easy way a lot of anthems on here it's a great double album right it's it, you almost wish that kind of they would have just done a full studio album and then release a full live album to live album, yeah. combining them right but i think you get kind of the best of both worlds so i really dig it a lot good stuff double trouble all right what do you got for number three martin number three i'm going with uh magic and there's my framed up magic with some some cool uh ian gillen band and gillen um ticket stubs that i bought off a of buddy Northwest of the city here in Brampton. That one's signed by Ian and Yannick. And uh, yeah, I just, um, 
I really like that this is a pretty heavy album. Uh, Demon Driver, I, I have the same same problems with that one. To me, that one sounds like like he's forcing himself to write a heavy metal tune. It's a little bit like uh, my, my slight complaints about Aerosmith, Kings and Queens and Zeppelin, Achilles' Last Stand. I mean, to me, this is a song that he could have brought into Black Sabbath and stuck on Born Again in a way, right? Um, but so much of the rest of it, man, um, you know, bluesy bluesy is so cool and got heavy and dark. And it's got that hint of the blues. Like Caught in a trap is cool too. Um, long gone. I mean, I, I like, I like the commercial kind of things on here. You're so yeah. right is, is such an interesting one where it's got that, that really poppy sort of chorus. And then, and then this slams into the verse this, da, 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 tsh, tsh. You know, and just just again, just moving like a freight train. Um, yeah. And this one, you know, all of these basically from Mr. Universe to the end have this singular sort of crazy drunken production values that I just love. And Colin Towns is so unpredictable. And you hear him on the Stevie Wonder one as well. But uh, yeah, they're just uh, just a lot of good value on here. It reminds me a lot of Double Trouble. It's got that thing, you know, and, and you guys talk about the guitarists. I've never really thought about what I really think of Yannick on here. But but if I think hard about it with these ones, you know, I've got Double Trouble higher coming up. I, I think um, I think possibly the actual guitar riffs are better uh, with Yannick. Um, and uh, yeah, a little more complicated, a little more thoughtful. Um, it's a little less relying on the rhythm section and the keyboardist. Um, it's a little more, you know, centered around guitar, I think, uh, with him. But yeah, I, I think it, yeah, ev everything on here, it's just, it, it just has that charming, what are they going to do? Mixing commercial with the punk rock, with the metal, uh, all, all, kind of together like double trouble so i was i was pretty pleased with this last one although i think out there in the in the wild um uh you know some of that bad lawn you know it, the dirty laundry was coming out in the band I, it just seemed a little bit like reminds me pete a little bit of uh the whole saints and sinners situation with white snake right where where it feels like you know we're barely hanging on maybe we don't like each other that much anymore and i think the fans kind of picked up that that they're they're kind of like ah oh, we've heard all these tricks before it's a little bit of that to this album but i i love these tricks so i don't mind hearing them them again so i've, I've yeah. got it in this position i guess this is number three right yeah yeah it's number three yep. yeah so my number three is the debut yeah um you know this record it's, it's a it's a mixed bag right so you guys probably know the history better but apparently there was there's versions of the songs on here that appear on Mr. Universe. There's versions that um, are, wait, there's a, there's, and then there's another version of Mr. Universe and there's versions of that on here. And then there's songs that are only on here. And then there's songs on here that are exactly like the ones on Mr. Universe. So, you know what I mean? so it's like, it's kind of a mixed bag. So, um, but anyways, but I'm only going to really talk about or mention the songs or versions that are exclusive to this record. So, so you know, it starts off with the this instrumental, which is okay. Then to get into Secret of the Dance, that's a great up-tempo rocker. I prefer the Mr. Universe version, though. Uh, it's a little more frenetic, and it has, uh, it has some great guitar work on it. Um, I'm your man. Pretty good track. It has some cool, interesting changes. That's that's the one thing with these guys that I really like is sometimes like you'll be listening to you know like a verse and you kind of think the song is one thing and then it just they turn it on its head and it's got some crazy changes and turns into something else and I love that and they do that quite a bit on uh, on some of their tracks. Um, you know, Dead and Night uh, sounds way heavier again on Mr. Universe. I like the groove of this one, catchy riff. I also love the keyboard break on I again on Mr. Universe. Uh message in a bottle, you know, it's kind of all about it's a drinking song. Uh cool up tempo track. Again, I prefer the Mr. Universe version. <laughs> I kind of just, you know, I I just I like hearing Bernie play on this stuff, you know. Um uh not weird enough up tempo hooky rocker it's a cool throwback kind of got a very 80s kind of keyboard solo which is cool it's got poppy moments the chorus is super catchy bringing joanna back this has got a kind of a funk with the pop feel to it okay not my favorite but okay then you got abby of thelema that's how i guess that's how you pronounce it it's, it's an alistair cowley thing 
Yeah. Yeah, it's it's got an interesting piano riff. It picks up. Uh, it's got some cool changes. Not a bad song. Then you got back in the game. I love the B section where it picks up, then takes you to a cool bridge. Okay, song for me, Vengeance. That's a fantastic song. I love Vengeance, but also I like it better on Mr. Universe. Uh, but it's real poppy and cool. Um, move with the time. Uh, it's up tempo blue shuffle kind of get a little bit of a like a zeppelin feel on this one the solos on it are really really cool sleeping on the job uh you're into bonus on... bonus tracks here hack in a big way yeah sleep okay i'm getting the bonus tracks okay yeah, so rocker, there's, uh, okay. there's there's 10 original uh, oh okay i'll stop right there yeah because yeah. i mean i'm just pulling this off of the uh yeah. the youtube so they're throwing these extra stuff so i'll stop right there because yeah sleeping on the jobs on glory uh glory road right anyway okay so i'll stop there but um yeah you know the the songs that they do here that appear on mr universe I, I, like i said it's just it's that that bernie ingredient and when you listen to the songs because what i did was i actually would listen and then i would do them back to back right and i, I like first of all i, I like that the mystery universe it's a heavier production it, it just sounds better right it's just more detail in the sound and bernie is not you know not that he's playing not so much the solos but there's a lot of little guitar fills and things that he's doing on the mr universe version that are not on this version on these versions so that's why generally i like them better but i mean the songs are on the record so that's why the record you know got as high as number three because these are great tunes right so there you go there's my number three all righty <clears throat> number two number two i want to give a shout out we got a whole bunch of sea tranquility people in the chat Craig Kaminsky and Gary Joyce are leading the charge. We got Ken, we got Logan, we got John, the Dark Wizard, all sorts of people yeah, hanging out. Nice. Hello, everybody. Nice. All right. So my number two, I'm going to go well, with uh, Glory Road. Number two. Number two. Yes, indeed. I mean, it's got Unchain Your Brain on the album. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> one, of, one of my favorite songs. Uh, I mean, it's, you know. Bernie Torme, just those wild Stratocaster dive bombs all over the place. Just it's Unchain Your Brain is like pretty much speed metal or early. Speed yeah, metal. it's very so, fast. Yeah. Ah, so good. Are you sure? Is big stomping heavy rock. Uh, time and time again, it isn't that great, but uh, No Easy Way is fun. It's heavy. It's kind of bluesy. Again, some wild Bernie Torme guitar noises all over the place. Uh, Sleeping on a Job is a memorable rocker. Um, I love On the Rocks. I think that is just a terrific song. It's part prog. It's part metal. One of my favorites. Uh, if You Believe Me is kind of like that slow, kind of like bluesy type thing. Um, and Running running White Face City Boy is another like yeah. you know, light, punky, speed metal -y sort of yeah. song. I just absolutely love it. And then I really, really like Nervous. I think it is it is slow. It's slow. It's heavy. I think this is a killer album. I really like it a lot. Um and I think the I, I love the logo, but I just I wish they would have done something else with the cover because otherwise it's just kind of plain Jane. But uh, but still, yeah. uh, great great album. If it wasn't for my number one, that would be it. But my number one is my number one for a reason. All right, what's number two, Martin? Well, I'm gonna go with Double Trouble. Um, the live album is dead to me. I don't care about it at all. Uh, it's it's doing the whole rainbow on stage, made in Japan thing. I, I don't care. <laughs> Um, but the studio side just, just slays me. I mean, things like Sunbeam, Man of War, I'll rip your spine out. They're just so heavy and atmospheric and almost all the way to Black Sabbath born again. I, I think, I think this is the most, uh, most, uh, polluted and smoke choked, uh, production of the, of all the albums, uh, just these big boomy Bonham-esque drums, but still punky at the same time. Um, Another another thing, you know, I I often say about Colin Towns is he it it, it he makes this band sound like a heavy metal Doors at some, at times too. Yeah. Really um, but uh, I love the commercial stuff on here too. Nightmare, just such a cool rumbling. Just with that production, it's it's uh it it just does something to it that just adds integrity, even though it's a really commercial song. But it's got you know that keyboard lick and and you know Ian singing uh you know pretty melodically on it. Born to Kill is a great uh 
you know, one of their absolute uh, cool epics. But uh, and it, and in the realm of Sunbeam, Men of War, and I'll rip your spine out is Life Goes On. I mean, that's another just crushing, heavy kind of Sabbathy. So there's a lot of Sabbath to this, I guess, as well. And Hadley Bop Bop, besides the title and the way it kind of rises, it's still a pretty heavy, frantic tune. It's it's pretty it's pretty rocking. Um, so yeah, I, I think this, uh, this, the studio side on here is just a barrel of laughs, a barrel of monkeys. Uh, there you go. Double trouble. <laughs> All righty. Well, my number two, Mr. Universe. And overall, this is a really, really good record. You know, it starts off second sight get that spooky intro that kind of leads into the record then you've got the hyper speed speed metal secret of the dance great rocker the keyboard solo is amazing yeah. she tears me down awesome so hooky and the piano work man like the piano work this colin towns guy like the ray manzarek of this band yes uh just one of the best songs on here roller solid up tempo rocker with some great riffs a really cool guitar solo and keyboard solo on that as well. Title cuts got some nice melody and changes. The keyboard riff is cool. And then there's the Bernie Tom Torme Eddie Van Halen eruption moment that goes on for a bit. And it's really freaking cool, man. Lots of whammy, lots of pick slides. I dig it. I dig it. And then you've got vengeance. Um, just a total. That's a total radio song, man. It's great. Everything on that song is a hook. The verse is a hook. The chorus is a hook. Everything in that song is a hook. That should have gotten, I don't know if it did, but if not, it should have gotten some radio play. Then you got Puget Sound, very white snaky, bluesy rocker, big riffing is cool. And I dig that again, that honky tonk, Bernie or uh, Colin Towns piano playing. Just beautiful, beautiful stuff. Dead of Night, love the start. It's got that fuzzy bass riff. You know, that's on the upbeat, and then the band comes in on a downbeat. Like, that's just that. I, I love that shit, man. It's just that's one of my faves on here as well. What else we got? Message in a bottle, not the police version. Another up tempo, heavier version that's on than on Gillen. That's the drinking song and okay rocker. Fighting Man. Fighting Man is beautiful. The melody, the vocal, the arrangement for this, for me, this is the standout track on this whole record. I mean, it's seven minutes. It's epic. It's never boring. And that chorus and those changes, just holy shit. What an amazing song. Love that song, man. Love it, love it, love it. So there you go. Mr. That. Universe, number two. Nice. Cool. Killer. I do want to mention, because I've been kind of mentioning it throughout this, uh, the CD reissue of Glory Road that I just uh, talked about has a bonus disc on it. On that bonus disc is the, uh, I guess it was a fan club only release, Martin, called oh, yeah, yeah. For Gillen Fans yeah, Only. There it is. This is this is actually a Canadian <laughs> version of it. And I believe, I, I can't remember how I got this. I think I bought it used, but it it came with, uh, I think it, it's, it supposedly came with Glory Road. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know why or how this works, but yeah, it's, this is a, a full album of, of B sides. Yeah. Yeah. All sorts of extra stuff that you don't find anywhere else. So on here you get an extra, got 12 songs, 10 tracks, and then a couple other bonus, even more bonus. It's ridiculous. So, so much cool stuff on this reissue. Anyway. Final cut five or, or 10, 10 total. So 10. Okay. So on the CD, it's got 10 plus two additional ones. It got handles on her hips and I might as well go home. So, yeah. Cool. All right, my number one is uh, Mr. Universe. Yeah, love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, it. To me, this is one of the most underrated heavy rock albums of all time. And anybody who's into new wave of British heavy metal or classic early '80s metal or late '70s metal or whatever, if you don't have this, you need it. Uh, I. You know, Secrets of the Dance obviously was on the first album, but it's great on here too. She Tears Me Down is excellent. I love Roller. I think the title track is the best song this band ever did, although they have a lot of great songs. It's just so cool. It's proggy. It's heavy. I mean, Vengeance is like such a great foot-stomping, fist-raising anthem. 
It's so good. Yeah, it's it killer. That's a great song. song. Yeah, it's, it should have been. Should have been. Yeah. Uh, Puget Sound is so good. You know, John McCoy's big throbbing fat bass in Dead of Night. So good. Message in a Bottle is great. Fighting Man is epic. I, I absolutely love it. And if you get the CD reissue this, you get a uh, live version of Smoke on the Water. Because, of course, <laughs> why the hell not, right? Why not? There you go. That's my number one. Great record, man. All right. What's your number one, Martin? Talk about it some more, Martin. I've got to check something here to make sure Wiki's <laughs> right about this. But I, I think, uh, yeah, I guess I guess they are right about it. That's true. So, um, so yeah, my number one is um, Mystery Universe. Um, all songs written by Ian Gillen and Colin Towns. Yeah. That's so weird, eh? All songs written by the that I don't know if that that sounds sounds almost suspicious. Like how how could Colin Towns be writing all these songs? Uh, yeah, right? all knows? these rock and heavy guitar songs, right? But um, yeah, I think I think the production is just is just, just crazy insane on this, and it's it's similar, like I say, to to the other ones, uh, except the first one, I suppose. But uh, yeah, all that great Colin Town stuff in in Second Sight. I mean, who you know, this guy can make a, make a, an instrumental like that that's keyboard based sounds super interesting. And you know, yeah. Secret, Secret of the Dance is coming, and that's just just kicking kicking butt there. Uh, this roller is is a thousand times better than April Wine's roller. This is just such a cool <laughs> rock and marauding new wave of British heavy metal song. Uh, yeah, Mister Universe, my favorite song they've ever done. Uh, absolutely epic. What I it's got some of my my favorite magical music moments of all time. And that's based around um, Mick Underwood's, uh, you know, he, he, he really likes snare drum for fills. Uh, so does Dave Holland actually, but, uh, but Mick's snare drum fills that there's a, there's a part where they kick back in and he does this great fill. It's just so cool and so heavy. And it's got that lead up with all that, that guitar, but absolutely epic. Vengeance is a lot of fun. I don't think it really fits on the album, but I, I really like it. I'm glad it's here. I also feel Puget Sound, Puget Sound doesn't fit on the album that well. Um, we always loved this growing up in BC because it's cool that they write a song about, you know, the, the bay around Seattle, like close by. It's like, this, this is weird, right? Uh, but we always thought that was cool. Yeah, Dead of Night with that, that you know, crazy stonking bass and then coming in on the offbeat, which flips the song around kind of thing as you described their hack. And yeah, Message in a Bottle and Fighting Man, absolute classic, just Wall to wall, one of the great metal albums of all time. Uh, love it to death. Uh, Mr. Universe, number one. All right. Well, I'm the odd man out. But, man, you got a good it's, one. There you go. It's Glory Road, dude. It's Glory Road. Um, you know, un, it starts with Unchain Your Brain. And that's an old, like that song for me, it's, it's okay. But are you sure the second track is just a cool heavy groove man the riff on that is amazing the changes the b section so freaking cool time and again starts off kind of like a it sounds like a cheesy <coughs> excuse me starts off like a kind of a cheesy 80s song with 80s keys but then it morphs into all these different changes it's done so well and then and going from one part to another it's just seamless like that's one of those tracks where you're listening to it okay it's one of these is it and then then they hit you with this then they hit you with that and it's just the juxtaposition of those parts one after the other just amazing it like i love being surprised and in a good way and that that does it no easy way epic guitar opening all hail the whammy you know this one has a new wave feel to it. Great catchy chorus, man. You know, they got sleeping on a job. That riff is monster. It's so cool. The pre-chorus is cool. The version, again, better version on this um, because I did the extended ones. Anyway, um, on the rocks, you got that long keyboard intro. Then it just rocks. The bridge here is awesome. The keyboard part is big and majestic. Just great. The guitar solo is really cool as well. If you believe me, it's got that really kind of bluesy Hendrixy guitar vibe on it. The vocal on this song is is really really good. I love the blues when they when bands slow down and they do bluesy stuff. I'm all in for that stuff, and it's got that blues groove here and the guitar fills and the solo. Again, his solos very unorthodox but great, and that's why you know Bernie Torme. You got to check this guy out. 
And then you got <laughs> uh, Running White Face City Boy. I don't know. I just dig it. It's catchy. It's cool. It's up tempo. Love it. And you got Nervous. It's got that infectious riff, you know. And then you got the changes that build off that main riff. The guitar sounds are great. Great on that song. Glory, like Glory Road for me, it's the reason it's number one is a lot of the records are kind of uneven. This for me is the most consistent. There's songs on other records that I like better, but top to bottom, this for me is the most satisfying listen of all the records. But there is some stellar stuff on all these records. Like there's not, there's no dogs in this show. I mean, everything is good, yeah. you know, from the, from this band. So Absolutely. there you go. Cool. Nice. All righty. So what are you guys uh, cooking up? Pete, what's going on? Oh, geez. Martin and I have another epic show tomorrow morning, which is uh, very similar, closely related to what we just did just, just here. So <laughs> we're, we're taking, a, we're taking a look at like the uh, deep purple family tree of albums released between what is it? 76 Martin. Yeah. And, and 83. 80. Three, although you snuck one in there in early 84 saying this this is before a uh, perfect stranger so we snuck one more in so we're going into <laughs> early 84 yeah so uh so basically when when deep purple was non-existent after the come taste the band album and before uh perfect strangers everything that those guys in the band had done in between were throwing them all into a big pile and we're ranking all of them so what do we have? 20, what, what are 29 albums, Martin? Like 29. Holy yeah. shit. 29 albums. Yeah. So wow. you know, rainbow albums in that time period. Yeah, rainbow, except yeah. For, except for the first Richie Blackmore's Rainbow, because that came out while Deep Purple was still a band. So we're not including that. So it's from Rainbow Rising all the way to Bent Out of Shape, all those White Snake albums, uh, up into uh um uh, right, so slide it in, right? Uh, we slide it in. What there. year are you going oh, up to? On. Yeah, slide it in. Hang on. I Do we not? I don't think we included slide it in. We probably need to, right? No, I. Uh, every, everybody's gone by then, right? John Lord's on that album. John Lord on that album. Yeah. Hang on. Well, I'll have to look at that. Yeah, let's double check that because that okay. may throw a wrinkle into my ranking. Anyway, the Gillen albums and uh, Ian Pace playing on Gary Moore and the Pace Ashton Lord and a couple John. Oh Lord yeah, yeah. You got the whole yeah. It's a whole whole bunch of stuff. And uh, uh, there's a lot in there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's tomorrow morning. <laughs> it should be loads of fun. Uh, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> And cool. otherwise, uh, yeah, the normal stuff we got. Uh, Jamie Laszlo is doing the uh, the review crew on uh, Saturday, and then I'll be ranking the albums of uh, Voyager, which is really cool Australian progressive metal band on Sunday. So that's kind of what's coming up. I got it backwards. Get this record. Oh yeah, of course. Yes, New Jesus Priest. Incredible. <clears throat> yep. Good stuff. What about yourself, Martin? What's what's coming up what's going on well the the audio podcast i think the next episode of history and five songs with martin popoff is going to be about occupation songs songs written about uh the lead singers playing a character in a job uh you know either a serial killer uh, which is i, I guess a job so it doesn't pay very well but it's gonna no. be some serial killer uh songs uh but you know paperback writer and ufo the writer that kind of thing right like uh right like right guys, guys in roles playing a character kind of songs i haven't figured out exactly yet but that's coming up um we did our uh our weekly album cover show on the contrarians last night about album covers with people wearing a lot of makeup on them um the books is all at martinpopoff.com the latest ones there were the thin lizzie panel book the robert plant panel book uh the two blue oyster cult related imaginals books uh that, that's now a pair and still got the big heavy ones you know the the bowie and the uh dark side of the moon and the who and all that kind of stuff and that's all at uh, martinpopoff.com Cool. So I've got, well, most of the people in here are probably some Sea Tranquility people anyway, but I have a link to uh, Pete's channel below. I also have a link to The Contrarians and uh, also Martin's website if you like to order some books. Um, so I did not do a recommend an album to review episode today. I usually do them every Thursday. I did not one, do one today because I had to get ready for this. I will be doing one next Thursday. Uh, I've got my album picked out, and I think I may have turned Pete onto that band as well. So that'll be coming up next week. Uh, we'll be back next month uh, with another band to review. I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, 
appreciate it so much. You guys all rock and uh, guys hang on for a bit and uh, we'll have a great rest of your week and we'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>